The other significant polymorphism construct in C++ is templates. Um, these are very similar to Java's generics or Scala's type parameters. I'm just going to get into them a little bit in this video. There are a whole lot of details to templates that will be covered later on, uh, but this is enough for you to write basic code. So in order to illustrate this, I've written just a single file that has a main in it. And we start off with a little struct that has an int and a double. As the name implies, what's significant about this struct is that you can't print it, uh, at least not using the uh, C out. It's not overloaded for being sent into output streams. Then we have the first template code here. So I'm declaring a class called simple template class. And Above the declaration, I put template type name T. What that means is that this class is templated on one type. I don't have to just do one type. It's possible to template on multiple types. I don't need it here. Uh, most of the code that you're writing won't, though there will be some situations. For example, maps. Maps need to be templated on two different types. It also turns out that you can template on integer values. Um, once again, that's more of an advanced technique that we're not going to worry about at this point. So we create this class. I declare two values in it. Notice that here I left out the private because in a class private is the default visibility. So they're called A and B and they are both of type T. So inside of the class now we can use T to refer to a type because as it says here t is a type name the constructor you pass in values something to note here they are passed in as const references why not just pass them in as values well because if you pass it in as a value you have to do the type constructor and the problem there is we know nothing about t for all we know t occupies 10 billion bytes probably not um, and because if it did we'd have problems here making two copies of them because we have to have copies inside of the class but the general idea is I don't want to make an extra copy passing it in just to make a copy right here as well okay. anytime you're have you have arguments that take templated values you're almost always going to make them uh, either pointers or references, which means that most of the time they'll be const references, okay, just like I'm doing here. I don't need to change this. I don't want to be able to change it. If I were to change it, that would be a bug. But I do need to get you know some, in this case, a reference to it, so that I can copy the value over into my local variable. But since I don't know how big this thing is, I probably don't actually want to do any more copying than necessary. And then here we have a method called print both, which does exactly what it says. It prints out A and B separated by a space. Now this is where things get interesting. Okay. This is actually putting a requirement on type T. In order for this code to work, whatever type T is, it has to be something that you can send into C out. Because if you can't do that, this wouldn't be able to compile. So the first test that I have in my main is I declare a simple template class on int. I pass it one and two, and then I call print both. And this code is perfectly happy. And it prints out the one and the two. Okay. It turns out the way that C++ works with templates it compiles what is absolutely required and it will work with any type where the code compiles. If the code compiles, that means it was a happy type. If the code doesn't compile, it means it doesn't. Whereas in Java or Scala, if you're using the generics or the type parameters, by default, these things would be treated as type any and the only things you could do with them were things that you could do with type any, which is very limited. If you wanted to be able to do something more specific, you had to say that it extended something, or you had to give say that it was going to be a subtype. You had to restrict the type of T so that it would only do the so it would be able to do the things you wanted. 
That's not how it works in C++. In C++, the only restriction is what you put in this class. In a sense, the interface of type T is defined implicitly. Okay, it's not explicit. I don't say that T has to inherit from something or extend something. Instead, I say whatever T you want as long as this code is happy. The other thing that's interesting to note here, so we'll add in another line. I'm going to declare a simple template class on our type not printable. Okay, now since the thing that's happening here is I'm printing them, the name not printable probably starts to make sense here. Uh, and you might worry, oh gosh, now we have a problem. So I create a not printable with 1.1 one, one, and a not printable with 3 and 3.14. Note the short syntax. You can use this curly brace initializer syntax on structs. Even though I didn't put a constructor inside of here, by default it will just initialize these things in the order that they appear. Okay. So, what happens with this code? Turns out, still compiles. Okay? We get the same output. Because I haven't actually called the print both. And that's the other thing about the templates. They will do the minimal compilation that is needed. So I could have a template class that has a whole bunch of methods in them. And it's possible that not all of them will compile with a particular type T. And that's fine as long as I don't force it to compile. There are actually ways to manually force it to compile that kind of go beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. Um, in this case, though, the other way to force it is to actually call it. So if I try to call print both on that object, now I get an error. The thing to note about template errors, template errors are generally ugly. Okay? And they get a lot worse than this. The first time you cause an error, with something like a vector, you will see a very long uh, error associated with it. So what this, if you translate this error, it basically says, hey, I don't know how to do this operation here with a type not printable. Okay? Cannot bind O stream of basic O stream L value to the basic O stream there, and it's happening on line 18. Yeah, it was so, so that gives you some hint there, but this error message is not necessarily the, the most readable, and that's how template errors are generally going to, to look in C11. They are working on trying to do some things that could help with this, but they're not in C11. So, note the thing about the templates is. They will compile with any type that it actually works under, and it will only compile what you force it to compile. So in this case, only what we call. So even though you really can't use, not all of this will compile with type not printable, that's fine. Templates can also be used on functions. And so here I've written a function, once again, template type name t. It's called add three. I pass in three different const references to t, and I just return their sum. Simple enough code. Note that this has a restriction here. Type T has to have a plus defined. I have to be able to say one type T plus another type T. If I try to call this and I use something that I can't do plus on, then it's not going to compile. The other thing to note is that when you declare an object of a class, so when you use the template syntax on a class, I have to specify what the template type is here. On the other hand, when you call a function, generally C++ will try to infer that type. For those of you who are familiar with Scala, this is the standard behavior that you're used to. Scala does type inference in many different locations. C++ does it for templates on templated functions. So here, because I called add three and I passed it one, two, three, it infers that t is an int here. It adds them together. And that's the six that's printing out there. Okay, so syntax is very similar for these. The difference is I don't have to specify a type, I could. I can actually tell it, force this to be ints, 
Yeah. Um, interesting question. Yep. Okay. So now this only printed as a six, but it's actually printing out a double there. It's just that's when there is no fractional part. Uh, that's what you get. So you can specify a type there. It's just most usages of template functions you don't need to because it can infer it. So that's your brief introduction to templates. It sets you up so that you can actually use these in simple code. In my data structures class, you'll be using the version up here where you template classes a lot because most of your data structures have to be templated on a particular type.